What if I were to tell you that there is a body inside this luggage, and this is Jung Yoo Jung, a 23-year-old woman from South Korea, and she may appear to be non-threatening, and it could be her glasses or her stature that give off that impression. However, when you think of a psychopath or killer, you don't imagine a person like Jung. But what if I were to tell you that Jung was obsessed with true crime? In fact, so much so that she wanted to feel what it was like to commit a murder. And inside this luggage was the body of her victim. This is the case of Jung Yoo Jung. Our story takes place on the southeastern coast of South Korea. Busan is a bustling city with rich cultural heritage and a modern urban landscape. As the second largest city in the country, it is a major economic and cultural center. Busan offers a diverse range of attractions and activities, from ancient temples and palaces to modern skyscrapers and shopping districts. The city seamlessly blends tradition and innovation. With its blend of history, modernity, natural landscapes, and culinary delights, Busan offers a captivating experience. But unfortunately, this is only the backdrop to where our horrifying story takes place. Yu Jung is a 23-year-old woman who was born in 1999. She found solace in her early years as her mother left her when she was two, and her father was involved in a criminal case when she was six. And as a result, she was raised by her grandfather in the northern district of Busan's Book Gu. And this is where she attended Kangae Girls High School, a private secondary school, and her reputation was that she was quiet and for the most part kept to herself. She was known for often sitting in the back of the class without any friends. And during her lunch break, she would seclude herself behind her books and would eat lunch where no one could see her. It was evident that social interactions made her uncomfortable and she would give one word responses and that's if she would respond at all. And what's most interesting is that her ex-classmates report that she was never a victim of bullying. Even after graduation, Yu Jung remained unemployed for five years. However, she would go on to take an interest in the civil service industry, where English abilities and civil service exams are requirements. But unfortunately, Yu Jung's English skills were at the level of a high school student, which simply just isn't enough. And in recent years, Yu Jung's isolation intensified. She rarely went outside, didn't make plans with friends. And to add to this, she had developed an obsession with true crime, owning numerous books and novels on murder cases, watching true crime programs, and becoming obsessed with specific serial killers. It was all she would think about. And with her being unemployed, it left too much time for this obsession. And when her phone records were later investigated, it was revealed that her phone had no contacts saved in it. However, there is evidence that Jung had attempted to apply for jobs. At the age of 18 years old, she applied to a golf company as a caddy girl. In her resume, she expressed her love for working in social environments and how she flourished amongst others. However, during the interview, she remained silent, and her responses were yes or no answers. And despite the awkward interview, she reapplied to this job multiple times and even called the company, leaving multiple frustrated voicemails when she didn't receive a call back. Looking closely at her resume, it mentioned her desire to live on the golf course property while working at the company. Professionals believe that this was a sign of her wanting to escape her current life, but she struggled to express herself and understand her own identity. And instead of following the typical path of getting a job, earning money, and becoming more social, she seemed to search for an escape elsewhere. And officials would go on to say that even though she was never officially diagnosed, there is a high probability that Yu Jung has Asperger's syndrome. Now, for those who don't know, 
Asperger's syndrome can be described as a neurodevelopment disorder characterized by difficulties in social interactions and nonverbal cues, along with a restrictive and repetitive patterns of behaviors. Individuals with Asperger's syndrome may have an intense focus on a specific subject, like her obsession with true crime. And this is when true crime just wasn't enough for her anymore. She started making several concerning searches like how to murder somebody and how to murder without a body. One day, Yu Jung went on to create an account on a tutoring app. Now, these apps are quite popular among parents in Korea as they function kind of like dating apps, but for finding tutors and babysitters. In this case, Yu Jung created a profile where she pretended to be a mother of a teenage daughter who needed a tutor to prepare for high school. She specifically mentioned that her daughter was 14 years old and was looking for an English teacher. On this app, teachers and students can exchange messages. You can either browse through profiles to find the right tutor, or teachers can reach out to you based on your requirements and specifications. In this particular situation, Jung was the one who initiated contact with a tutor by the name of Kim. Now, Kim was a 26-year-old tutor who taught English and other college-level courses. And recently, some conversations had come out showcasing dialogue between Jung and Kim. They communicated back and forth about topics to cover when teaching her child, as well as Kim's availability. Jung, however, seemed overly curious and concerned about whether Kim lived alone. And as their conversations progressed, Kim and Yu Jung eventually reached an agreement. They decided to meet on May 26, and Jung planned to send her teenage daughter to the tutor's house for a session. Now, some tutors have come forward sharing their experiences of being contacted by Jung. She would almost immediately ask, do you live alone? And I need a tutor for my daughter for approximately two weeks. Can we have the tutoring sessions at your place? One tutor almost agreed, but declined at the idea of tutoring in her small one bedroom apartment as there was no suitable space for it. She mentioned if she had a larger house, she might have said yes considering her need for a job and income. Another woman had a similar encounter with Jung, and again, she would immediately ask, do you live alone? People now believe that Jung targeted individuals around her age, particularly tutors in their 20s who needed money and lived alone. It seemed like she had a very specific type of victim in mind. You see, in Korea, it's very normal to live with your parents and receive an allowance well into your 20s. So finding a so-called perfect victim that were both around Jung's age and lived alone would prove to be a very difficult task. But ultimately, this is why Kim was working as a tutor. She wanted to work hard to cut the allowance she was receiving from her parents as she felt like she was just a burden. On May 26th at 4 p.m., there's CCTV footage of Jung wearing a middle school uniform as she headed to the tutor's place, pretending to be her 14-year-old daughter. She went to such lengths as to buy a middle school uniform online instead of wearing her regular clothes, perfectly disguising herself as her supposed daughter. She concealed a knife in her pocket and then headed to Kim's house. And because of Jung's height of only four foot nine, Kim didn't question her age and warmly welcomed her inside. And once inside, Jung revealed her hidden knife and brutally stabbed Kim in the neck and chest, inflicting a total of 111 stab wounds. It was later discovered that Jung also stabbed Kim's palms multiple times. These wounds are typically found on victims who are trying to protect themselves from their attacker by putting their hands in the way of the blade. Jung had also gone as far as removing Kim's fingerprints to avoid identification. Jung would return home shortly after midnight and retrieve the suitcase. She then made a stop at a local supermarket purchasing knives, locks, zip ties, bleach, and plastic bags. She then went back to Kim's home. There, she separated her body into multiple pieces and placed some of them inside of her suitcase that she had just brought back from home. And around 3 a.m. on March 27th, Jung took the suitcase containing the separated body parts and called a taxi. She then asked to be dropped off near a wooded area. The taxi arrived, picked her up, and dropped her off in the infamous Nakdong River. This is a well-known dumping ground for criminals' victims. When the taxi arrived, the driver initially didn't think much 
much of it. However, her peculiar request to be dropped off near the wooded area raised his suspicions. He dropped her off at the Nokdong River, but coincidentally remained parked at the same location, having a cigarette. After about 20 minutes, Jung returned with a noticeably lighter suitcase, and oddly enough, she approached him as if she didn't recognize him, as if he didn't just drive her 20 minutes earlier. At this point, the driver became convinced that something was strange about Jung. He completed the trip and promptly informed the police about the strange encounter with his passenger. Interestingly, Jung had brought the suitcase back with her instead of disposing of it altogether, resulting in the presence of blood being found in her suitcase. And when the police arrested her, they found blood stains. But when they questioned her about it, she claimed that it was her own blood. And out of nowhere, Jung began complaining about excruciating pain and insisted on being hospitalized immediately. Now confused about Jung's complaints, the police took her to the hospital. But upon arrival, Jung proceeded to explain to the doctors that she had a miscarriage and disposed of the baby in the woods. And in response, the hospital promptly arranged for a gynecologist to examine her. But the gynecologist revealed that her story was just false. It seemed like it was just a feeble attempt to buy herself some more time. Once this was discovered, the police immediately dispatched officers to search the area, which eventually led them to discover Kim's body near the Nokdong River. Jung was immediately arrested in the hospital and held in custody pending further trial. Jung initially denied having killed Kim, stating that she had been held captive by Kim's real killer and that he had allowed her to leave and live the rest of her life as Kim if she agreed to dispose of the body. However, there was no proof of this and again, the police were convinced that this was just another ploy to buy more time. And of course, when this didn't work out, she claimed that she was embarrassed that she was an adult seeking an English tutor. And when she got there, they got in an argument about the outline of the curriculum and she decided to murder her out of rage. Eventually, Jung would go on to confess to some version of the truth, which is that she just wanted to know what it felt like to commit a murder. Over the course of several months, the case proceeded through the court system. And on November 24th, 2023, the verdict on Jung's case was announced. And all while the prosecution sought out the death penalty for her, she was ultimately sentenced to life in prison. It's important to note that three days before committing the crime, Jung had a two hour phone call with her father where she expressed her deep hatred for him. During this conversation, she made a chilling statement saying, I will do something terrible and as a result, you will suffer. And once I carry this dreadful act, I will take my own life. During the investigation, Jung confessed stating, I am certain that I killed the victim, but miraculously, she came back to life and spoke to me. She further requested to undergo a mental evaluation. Criminal psychologists have speculated that Jung Yu Jung's statements were likely an attempt to secure a more lenient judgment by being declared mentally unstable. And as a side note, Jung Yu Jung tested on the hair psychopathy checklist. It's a system that was invented in the 70s for measuring somebody's likelihood of being a psychopath. Generally, using this system, known psychopaths have scored about a 25. Jung Yu Jung scored a 28. This is one point higher than John Wayne Gacy. It's so sad that somebody could go on to lose their life simply because of somebody's curiosity to commit a murder. And as little as we know about Kim, she was simply trying to do a good thing by unburdening her parents of her allowance. And ultimately, this is what ended her life. I just wish that her father would have done something about the phone call he received. Because one simple phone call from her father could have changed the entire outcome for Kim. And as much as I feel for people that struggle with social anxiety and the inability of putting themselves out there, there is never a reason to take a life. But I wanna know your theories. Where did this all go wrong? And where could this have been prevented? Leave it in the comments below. And I would appreciate a like and subscribe if you're looking to help the channel. But until next time, stay safe, and I will see you when the lights go out.